Look, boys and girls, Dogwood is so excited to welcome your bus. Look! Yay, Dogwood! Has anybody seen Dogwood? The school bus is almost here with all of the boys and girls. Let's see. Dogwood! 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 Why are you taking a nap again? Hello boys and girls and welcome to this year's Teddy Bear Clinic. I'm Mr. Philip, and this is Dogwood. Can everybody wave hello? This year we're in the Lions group. Can everybody make the sound of a lion? Oh, very good. That was awesome. Well, today you're going to have lots of fun and our first stop is going to be going to wash our hands. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey boys and girls, Wendy here. I'm the infection prevention nurse for the hospital and this is my friend BB. That's short for bacteria bear. We're gonna talk about hand washing today. I hope you're all doing great and loving your mask. I bet you have some really cool masks with this pandemic going on. But BB here, like I said, is short for bacteria bear and that's because he's germy. You know, he touches lots of things and he don't wash his hands. So it's important that we wash our hands and keep them clean. And we're gonna talk about how we're supposed to wash our hands. And I'm sure you guys are doing a great job with COVID, keeping your hands clean. But Mr. Phillip here, there's some invisible germs on BB here that are pretend. And Mr. Phillip's gonna show you what they, germs, if you could see them with your naked eye, what they would look like. So Mr. Phillip, if you'll come over here to my black light, and you see my hands are clean right now. They look clean anyways. But then when Ooh. I put them in here, Ooh. look at all those germs that glow. Wow. Wow, those are germs. That's just from petting BB and hanging out with him for a little while. So now we're gonna wash our hands and see what a good job we can do. So first of all, you wanna turn your water on. You don't want it too hot and you don't want it too cold. So I'm gonna test the water. Then you're gonna wet both hands really good. Then you wanna get your soap on your hands. We're going to sing our ABCs while we scrub. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? And did you notice how I covered all surfaces of my hands, including my fingernails? Mm -hmm. Then you want to rinse really well, get all that soap off. Then you want to get your paper towel, dry your hands really good. You don't want to leave them wet and you don't want to leave them wet and then finish drying on your clothes because your clothes may have germs on where you've touched. And then always turn your water off with your paper towel and dispose of your paper towel. And now Mr. Phillip, if you want to come back and see if I did a good job. Wow. I think I did pretty good. That's really clean. Yeah, so it's so important and it helps protect our patients and keep them healthy. And you wanna remember, never put your hands in your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. And keep those hands clean, save lives. You show those germs who are boss. Have a great day, bye. Yay. Thank you, Miss Wendy, bye-bye. Wow, boys and girls, wasn't that fun washing our hands? Dogwood, did you wash your hands? Looks like it. Well, boys and girls, now we're going to get out our teddy bears. So if everybody would take their teddy bear Ziploc bag, and we're only gonna take out our teddy bear, okay? So take your bear out and hold him up right in front of you. All right. So this is our teddy bear. The first thing we're gonna do is name our teddy bear. I'm gonna name mine Mr. Teddy Bear. But what can you name yours? You can name it Lucy or Johnny or George or Maggie. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to name your teddy bear. Ready, set, go. Five, four, three, two, 
one, time's up. All right, all right, boys and girls, everybody listen. On the count of three, everybody yell your teddy bear's name. You ready? One, two, three. Oh, wow. That are some awesome names for your teddy bear. I love those names. So boys and girls, let me tell you the story of Mr. Teddy Bear. This morning, Mr. Teddy Bear decided to go out in his yard and play. He climbed a tree, but when he got to the first branch, it broke and he fell off the tree onto the ground and he hurt his arm. So he called for his mama bear, mama, come help me. So she came out, got Mr. Teddy Bear in the car and brought him to the hospital. And you know what, boys and girls? Mr. Teddy Bear discovered that the hospital is a place where it helps people get better and all the really nice people took good care of him. So when he got to the hospital, we went to the emergency room and they said, we better take an x-ray of you, Mr. Teddy Bear. So they sent us to radiology. Let's go over to radiology and see what they can find out, okay? All right, here we go. Here we go. Come on, dog man. All right. Well, here we are, lions, at radiology. Let's see what Mr. John has to tell us about taking x-rays. Hello, my name is John, and I'm an x-ray tech. And I guess our friend here, Bear, has hurt himself. Well, we're gonna take a picture of his insides and see if we can find out what's been hurt. All right, Mr. Bear, I'm gonna lay you right there. That's right. And we're gonna put a little lead shield over him to protect him from the parent parts we don't want to x-ray in the adult. Now, this won't hurt a bit. I'm gonna turn the light on here. And wherever the light shines is where I'm going to get an x-ray. Okay, you hold still, Mr. Bear. Put a little marker here so we can tell the left side from the right side. Okay, now, x-rays can be kind of dangerous. So, Dogwood, I'm going to have you step way back. All right. Hold real still. Okay, our picture is done. Mr. Bear, you didn't feel a thing, did you? It's just like getting your picture taken. All right, and here we'll have our x-ray. Oh my, it looks like Mr. Teddy broke his arm. We better send him. Where are we gonna send him to next? To the operating room. To the operating room where they'll take care of that broken bone. Wow, boys and girls, wasn't that exciting to see a machine help us figure out he had a broken bone? Well, now we're gonna go see if the operating room, because the doctor decided he needs to operate on the broken bone. So we're gonna go to the operating net room now and have a little surgery. You ready? Let's go. Come on, Dogwood. Thanks, John. Goodbye. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Robin, and I'm a nurse here at McDowell Hospital. I work in the operating room and the recovery room. So today they tell me that Mr. Teddy has fell out of a tree and he has broke his arm. So by the time you get to the operating room, he has already had his x-rays and they've discovered his arm is broke. So we're gonna bring Mr. Teddy in and we're gonna put the mask on. All right, boys and girls, take your mask out of your bag and put it on. You're gonna put it around your ears, okay? So this is what we put on everybody in the OR and even the nurses and the doctors. So then the good doctor comes in and he's going to fix you up. So you're going to put your doctor's hat on. We're going to pretend we're doctors today. We're all surgeons, okay? So put your little hat on. You can tie it in the back if you need to. When you get in the operating room, they're going to put this little mask on you. You don't have one in your bag, but we don't want you to ever be afraid of this mask, okay? This mask is to give you oxygen, okay? And we're going to put it on Teddy. So if you're ever at the hospital and they put one of these on you, it's not to hurt you and don't be afraid. It's to help you breathe and give you oxygen, okay? So we're gonna put the little mask on Teddy while he's in the operating room. So then the doctor will come in and he'll fix up your little arm and he'll put some cute little stretchy stuff on it, okay? Different colors. 
and he may even put a cast on that you can get all your friends to sign, okay? Now that don't mean go out and get your arm broke just so you can get it signed, okay? So then, once the surgery's done, they'll put him back on the little stretcher and they'll bring him out to the recovery room. And that's where you'll see some other friendly, nice faces and smiles and happy people, okay? Then when you wake up, we'll get mom and dad, okay? When Teddy wakes up, we'll get mom and dad to come in and he'll still have the wires on Teddy, but we'll take them all off and take his IV out and let mom and dad cuddle Teddy and comfort him. We'll give Teddy some cute stickers, maybe even an ice cream if he wants one. And we'll give mom and dad all kinds of instructions how to take care of Teddy. And that, you know, to keep Teddy from getting hurt anymore, how to protect Teddy's arm. And Teddy might be sleepy for the rest of the day, okay? So then we'll give mom and dad all these instructions and we'll tell them what to do to take care of Teddy. We always want every boy and girl to feel like they're safe to come to the hospital. We don't want you to be afraid of anything or anybody. We're here to take care of you and to help you and keep you from getting hurt, okay? So then we'll, we'll put Teddy and either mom, dad, grandma, whoever's with him in a wheelchair and we'll roll them out to the car so that they can go home. So basically what we're here for is to help you. Everybody at McDowell Hospital cares about you. We're here for you and we want to keep you safe. So don't ever be afraid of doctors, nurses, or anybody that's there to care for you. And we hope that you take good care of Teddy when you take him home today. And you make sure that arm stays safe and you watch him from now on. Don't let him be climbing in no tall trees, okay? You boys and girls have a very safe and happy day. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, boys and girls, did you get Mr. Teddy Bear all fixed up? I hope so. Look, I wrapped mine in red and he feels so much better. Well, you know what? Sometimes after we have surgery, they might want us to do a little physical therapy. So we're going to go now and see how a physical therapist can help Mr. Teddy Bear feel even better. Okay, let's go. Here we are, boys and girls, at physical therapy to see if Mr. Bear can start to feel better. Let's see what Miss Kristen has to teach us. Hi, students. My name is Christy, and I work in the therapy department. I'm here to show you what happens after you injure your arm. Our department is in charge of helping you recover and continue doing the things that you love. So sometimes when you hurt your arm, you have trouble getting dressed, tying your shoes, feeding yourself, combing your hair. The occupational therapist can teach you how to do those things safely or to use your other arm. It's really important that you don't re-injure your arm while it's still healing. Once your arm has healed, you might see the physical therapist or the occupational therapist, and they will do fun exercises with you to help get stronger so you can go back to doing the things that you love. You might play catch, Oh, so close. You might stretch and strengthen your arms with the band. We might play push and pull games so that you can get nice and strong and go back to playing the games that you love to play and with the toys that you love to play with. Wow, thank you, Mr. Christie, for showing us how Mr. Bear's arm can get stronger. I know he's going to be a little sore, but sooner or later, he's going to feel a whole lot better. Well, you know, the hospital is a place for everybody to feel better. And sometimes you're in a pl at, a, at a place where you don't know what something sounds like or what it looks like. It may be strange to you. So we're going to go to a patient's room now, boys and girls, and see what a patient room is really like. What kind of sounds that things make, what it looks like, what a different equipment are for. Okay, let's go this way. All right, boys and girls, now it's time to come into a patient room. And let's see some of the things that you'll see and hear when you're in a patient room. Come on in. Hi, everyone. Hello. We're gonna show you here Mr. Teddy Bear, or as Greg likes to call him, Cubby. So if you're to come into the hospital, one of the things that we're gonna wanna do is check you over. And so we're gonna do that by checking your temperature. Um, and so, Greg, if you'll... Uh,
and that'll go in your mouth. And then when you're done, you're gonna hear a little beep. But unfortunately, <laughs> Cubby is pretty cold, so we're not gonna get a temperature on him today. But one of the other things that we will do is check your blood pressure. So we have a blood pressure cuff that will go on your arm. Put that around Cubby's arm here. And then it'll blow up and it'll get just a little bit tight, but it won't hurt. It'll just get a little tight on your arm and then it will tell us how you're doing. <laughs> okay, if you'll go ahead and hit start, let's see what we can hear what that sounds like. Can you hear that noise? It'll get tight and then it will go back down. And it doesn't hurt. It just feels a little tight on your arm. Cubby, are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Now, if when you come in, one of the other things that we might do is hook you up to a machine that lets us see what your heart does. And so we have these little patches. I'm not going to put it on, on Teddy, but I'll put one on Greg here. Can I see your hand, Greg? Yep. So it's just a sticky little patch that just sits right there. It doesn't hurt, but it lets us see how your heart is doing, how strong it is, and how it's beating. So, but it doesn't hurt. It's just a little sticky tab. And then when we're done, we just pull it off. It's just sticky, that's all. It doesn't hurt. Now we also might start an IV on you. So I'm gonna turn this, uh, this machine on so you can hear that noise. And this lets us give you medicine. Oh, Cubby, you fell over. There you go. Is that feel better? Yeah, I'm better. Okay. So the other thing that we'll do is check your oxygen level. So this will go on your finger. But I'm going to show you on my finger. It just sits right here and it will tell me how well I'm breathing. And then there's our IV pump, and it will beep until we're ready to get it started here. And then we'll turn that off so it won't beep anymore. See? So it just goes on, it has a little bit of a light. It looks like ET when you put it on, but it doesn't hurt, it just sits on your finger. Ask questions? Yes, what question do you have? So, Miss Valerie and Mr. Greg, what is this thing up here? It looks like a TV. So, this is what we will hook up to your heart, and it will show us the tracing of what your heart looks like. We oh. hook it up to your chest, not to your heart, okay. but to your chest. And then your blood pressure, we can also hook you up so that it, it records up here. And this shows us all of your numbers oh. your blood pressure and your temperature, cool. how well you're breathing, how well your heart is beating. Oh. So it, shows everything in our body what's going on what about this what's this big thing oh let's turn that on and show you if we were going to do if we were going to look at an owie that you got out when you were riding your bike and you fell on the sidewalk and cut your knee we would bring this light down and we would focus right on your leg so that the doctor cool. could give you a band-aid so it's just a light i thought it was like some big machine that light. yeah it's just a really high big light. focused light Cool. Let's see. What is this thing over here? So this is a, this is suction. So what it does, it makes a really loud hissing noise. Can you hear that? Yeah. If I need to rinse out your knee, I can um, use this to gather the solution I'm rinsing your knee with. Hear the noise there. It's a big straw. Cool. Wow, that was really cool. So you know, when you come to the hospital, you don't have to be afraid of all the sights and sounds. They're all good things that will take good care of you. So boys and girls, let me ask you, which was your favorite sight and sound? Raise your hand and tell your teacher. Everybody raise your hand. Okay. All right, you can tell your teacher. And we want to thank Mr. Greg and Miss Valerie now we're going to go give our teddy bear an immunization. That's a big word. Another word for shot. Let's go, okay?
Has anybody seen Dogwood? Where is he? Oh, Dogwood. Hey boys and girls, now we're at the pharmacy station. And you know what? To go to school, we all have to get a shot in our arm. Ouch! But you know what? They're really good for us. So we're gonna do two things with our bag. If you will take out your Band-Aid, and then take out this little thing here. It's a pretend shot. It's just plastic. There's no needle or anything, okay? And we're gonna use this as our pretend shot today. So Mr. Nathan is gonna lead us through our pharmacy. Here we go. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for joining me. So like I said, my name is Nathan, and I'm a pharmacy student here with Mission McDowell. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about immunizations. What a big word, right? You might just know them as the word shot. I know. It's bad, but it's okay. It's gonna be great. So, why do you need a shot? It's an excellent question. Thank you so much for asking. So, has anyone else in here been sick before? Raise your hand if you've been sick. I know I've been sick. I hate being sick. It's terrible. So when you get sick, you might have remembered you had to go to the doctor's office with your mom and dad and get some medicine to make you feel better, right? So what a vaccine is, is medicine that you get before you get sick that keeps you from getting sick. Pretty cool, right? I think so. So, how do they work? Another great question. So, vaccine works like this. There are germs, these nasty, tiny little bullets. When they get inside your body, they start beating up on you and make you feel so bad and hurt. So when you get a vaccine, it teaches your body how to fight back those germs so you don't get sick. Pretty cool. So you might say, how do I get one? Another great question. So if you were to go to a pharmacy or a doctor's office, you'll see this little syringe. Inside that syringe, there'll be some liquid. That is the vaccine. So when you get the vaccine, you want to make sure you got to cleanse the site. I'm going to demonstrate on my good friend here, Dr. McDowell. So he's going to wipe your arm with an alcoholic. It's going to make it nice and clean, no germs there. He's going to take this syringe. And he's going to go right into your arm and just poke it just a little bit. Then he's going to take the liquid and push it into your body. Remember, that's going to make your body nice and strong and fight those germs. And when he takes it out, he's going to take a band-aid and put it right on your arm. And there you go. All done. Remember, it's not too bad. It might hurt a little bit. But it's going to keep your body strong and keep you from getting sick. Thanks for joining me. Wow, boys and girls. Did everybody give their bear a shot? I'm gonna put the Band-Aid on mine now. Well, thanks Mr. Nathan and Dogwood for helping out. Let's go to our next station, okay? All right, boys and girls, it's time for a little exercise. Everybody stand up. We're gonna do a little tootie ta Ready? Up, up, come on, get up. Here we go. Tootie ta Tootie ta
Hey boys and girls, now it's time to go to respiratory and let's find out about breathing. Come on this way. Hello boys and girls, I am Sherry. I am a respiratory therapist here at the McDowell Hospital. I'm glad you're here today. I'm going to show you a little bit about my bear having a breathing treatment. So if you ever have to come to the hospital, you won't be afraid to have a breathing treatment. So what this does is help you breathe better. If somebody's wheezing with a high-pitched noise that you may hear, you may have to have active breathing treatment for asthma or COPD. And some people that smoked for a long period of time sometimes have to have these, so we're never gonna start smoking, right, Dogwood? All right, so it's bad for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a little mask here, and you will put some medicine in your medicine cup here. And what we would do is attach it to some oxygen and let you breathe on it for a little while. It does not hurt. We'll just attach it just like this. And we will start the tank. And you will see a little bit of a, a nebulized mist there. And then we would ask you to breathe in and out, deep breath, in and out. And after that, we would hopefully that you would cough and you would clear your wheezing and you will feel better and go to the house. And some things that will help your lungs to stay better and healthy are good sleep, good exercise, good nutrition, good fluid intake, and exercise for sure outside running and playing. Right, Dogwood? Wow. Thank you, Miss Sherry. That was so interesting. Wasn't it, Dogwood? Do you boys, boys and girls like that? So one thing we should always remember is what? Never start smoking, right Dogwood? You don't smoke, do you? I didn't think so. I could never heard a coughing dog, have you? <laughs> well, next is, gosh, I can't remember. Uh, Dogwood, do you remember what we're supposed to do next? Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. We're gonna go now to a station and learn how to eat the rainbow. And we're not talking about Skittles, boys and girls. We're talking about learning how to eat healthy foods. And there are so many different colors of vegetables to eat. How many of you like to eat? Raise your hand. Yeah, me too. Well, let's go find out how we can eat some really good healthy foods. Here we go. All right, boys and girls, here we are at Eat the Rainbow. Let's welcome Miss Amy. Yeah, 
God, did somebody maybe say an apple? Or maybe some strawberries? Or tomatoes? There's lots of red fruits and vegetables that we can eat on a regular basis. That's right. What about maybe some orange fruits and vegetables? Let's think about some orange fruits and vegetables. I always go for an orange. I love oranges. Those are really good. But my favorite fruit is cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is bright orange, and I love that a lot. What else can you think of that might be orange that you would eat on a regular basis? An orange pepper? That would be good. That's a great idea, too. Very good. Okay, so boys and girls, what's the next color we would eat on the rainbow? Ooh, something yellow. Something yellow. Well, can you think of a yellow fruit or vegetable? Yep, bananas are really an obvious one, right? But one of my favorite yellow ones, what about squash or zucchini? I love those with yellow squash and I chop them up. Sometimes even pears come out a little orange, a little yellow. So kind of a combination of both. But what about like corn on the top? That's really good for us too. So there's lots of different foods that are yellow that would be really good for us. All right. Let's think, what's the next one? How about green? What about green? What can you think of that's green that you eat on a regular basis? Mm. What about some grapes? I love to snack on grapes. These are such a quick and easy snack. Do you know you can freeze grapes and eat those too and they taste just as good? They taste like hard candy. That's a nice mm. treat, okay? What about cucumbers? Or maybe something like kiwi? Have you ever tried something like that? So boys and girls, there's lots of green ones. What about green beans? Or broccoli? Or spinach? We have to try all these different fruits and vegetables to see what we really like. So I really encourage you to try something green, okay? Boys and girls, let's think about, what about that last color, those dark blues and purples. Can you think of a blue or a purple food that you might eat? <gasps> That's a harder one. You think of a blue or a purple fruit or vegetable you might eat? What about blueberries? That's one that I like to snack on a lot. And you can throw that in the freezer and make that like candy, just like you can the grapes. But you know, there's also stuff like a plum. What about plums? Have you ever tried that? That's a purple fruit. Or how about this one? Eggplant. I dare you to try some eggplant. It's really, really tasty. So boys and girls, my message to you is this. When you get an opportunity to try some new fruits and vegetables, and I know at the schools, a lot of times we're bringing in lots of fresh fruits vegetables for you to sample on the fruit and vegetable trays, take a chance and just take a bite and see if you like it. Think about how it feels in your mouth and what it smells like and what it tastes like. You might be really surprised. There's some really, really tasty treats when we're eating our fruits and vegetables. So boys and girls, remember, one of the best ways to take care of your body and keep it healthy is eating really good plant-based fruits and vegetables, but to know that you're eating healthy, just look at your plate. Are you eating the rainbow? If you are, you're good to go. Boys and girls, thanks so much, and I hope to see you soon. Bye! And Miss Amy, are you going to send home like a small orange with us? Oh, yes! Okay. I forgot! Oh my goodness! In your bag, there's yeah. going to be this nice little orange for you to try. Maybe you'll have it in class, or maybe you'll eat it when you get home. But I want every one of you to try this nice little treat um, and see what you think of this tasty orange. Okay? Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Have a great day. Everybody, let's say thank you to Miss Amy. Bye-bye. Boys and girls, it's time to say goodbye, and we have had such a great time here at the Teddy Bear Clinic. Remember, when you get home, to take good care of your teddy bear. 
And if you ever come back to the hospital, remember it's a very friendly place and we have great people who want to take good care of you. Hope you have a great day. Bye. Bye.